welcome back to the Just As We Are podcast. My name is Katrina Lelly and I am your host today, today, today. Oh gosh, I am on a high, you guys. I had the most beautiful conversation with Jess Hendrick, who is a professionally trained conscious relationship coach and occupational therapist focusing on mental health. Her specialty is guiding her clients to release unhealthy patterns, dating that same person in a different body, recreating the same toxic dynamics, triggers, and reactions, and attraction to unavailable people so they can finally experience fulfillment and connection in the relationships. She works with anyone who is struggling in all types of relationships, including your relationship with yourself. Oh my gosh. Relationships with friends, family, coworkers, bosses, and so on. She really has been through it all. She's been her own case study when it comes to relationships. By working on herself, she was able to change the course of her life. And now she guides her clients to do the same. Oh my goodness. Jess intuitively guides her clients to uncover beliefs in the subconscious mind that are creating discord in the relationships. Working with Jess will give you the gift of awareness of your pattern so you can reclaim your power and finally shift your relationship dynamics by going within and shifting the way you show up. This is how we alchemize and heal our relationships from the inside out. I have no idea if I said that word right, but you guys are going to love this relationship, this relationship. See, it's all about relationships. I'm getting so tongue-tied, but this conversation with Jess was so beautiful, so incredibly powerful. I will probably have her back on the podcast. We are definitely gonna do some more collaborations, but we do, we talk about, relationships and the importance of not getting stuck in that toxic cycle and and why do you go there and how do you get out of it and how do you shift and we talk about the relationship with yourself she opens up about her own story what was her like bottom line in knowing that she needed to do something different because she was attracting in those relationships that were not serving her that were just so unhealthy this is one of the most beautiful conversations incredibly powerful I am so excited to bring her to you guys, and I know that you're going to love this conversation just as you do all of them, but this one has such a special place in my heart, and I think it's so important that we are talking about this right now with the way the world seems to be and how there is people who are really having to show up and really sit with themselves and sit with their partners or sit with their friends. And, you know, how can we be more love and light in the world towards one another and towards ourselves? So such a good relationship, such a good, see, I can't say it, such a good episode, you guys. Just hang tight, sit in for this one, get really present with this episode because you're going to freaking love it. Hey there, girlfriend. Real quick, I wanted to let you know about something super special that I created just for you during this holiday season. My eight tips on how to have a stress-free, happy, joyous, and sane holiday season. We know this time of year brings so much pressure, stress, maybe some drama and overwhelm, tears usually. And, you know, it's 2020, so we know it's probably going to be like you know, amped up. And it doesn't have to be that way. That's why I've created this guide just for you. Eight super simple tips on remaining that stress-free, happy, joyous, and sane through the holiday season, packed with so much good info plus affirmations. Head on over to katrinalelly.co forward slash holiday guide. Or you can head on over to my Instagram bio, hit the link in my bio, and it'll get you right there as well. Katrinalelly.co forward slash holiday guide. You are not going to want to miss this. Welcome to the Just As We Are podcast. I'm Katrina Lelly, a wife, mom in recovery, certified life and transformation strategist, community cultivator, lover of people, and student of life. Each week, I'll bring you love, inspiration, share the harder things people are afraid to talk about, and guests who are willing to shine their light for you. I give you self-care practices and mindset tips to help you shatter the negative stories you tell yourself. Now is the time to step into the beautiful, loved, 
whole woman you already are. Let's walk this journey together. Hi, Jess. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. I'm incredibly excited that you're here today. Thank you, Katrina, for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yay! Yes, I love that I get to meet so many amazing and beautiful women. And the more that I show up, all of you show up for me and for my community. And I think it's just so awesome how when we choose to show up and step up um, and show up for ourselves, like God, the universe, whatever, just puts the right people in your path. Isn't that amazing? That's so, so true. I I think that's like one of the most true statements I've ever heard. (laughs) (laughs) It really is. And like this theme of being brave has really come up a lot lately for me. And so um, I'm just like talking about it. And, uh, you know, that's how I get to be right here. That's how I get to sit with you and have conversations and sit with other women and have beautiful conversations. And we share our stories. So I love it. Speaking of which, tell everybody who you are, what you do a little bit about yourself. Sure. So, so my name is Jess Hendrick and I am a conscious relationship coach. And what that means is really I guide my clients to uncover anything that's coming forward in their relationships. It could be with friends, with family, with romantic partners, and really uncover the dynamics what's going on there and what that tells them about themselves. So I believe that any challenge we're facing in relationship is a way to kind of get to know ourselves better and really uncover like the beliefs that are creating any, any challenge, any turmoil, any stress so that we can shift it so that we can feel fulfilled in all of our relationships. Mm, I think that's so amazing. And I, was so intrigued when I first started hearing about what you do, like conscious relationship. Holy cow, how many of us are not showing up in our relationship and like really being present and really intentional and clear on what, on who we're in relationship with? Yeah, I would say most of us. And I would also say that it's not our fault because none of us were really taught how to do that. So if we didn't see that modeled to us, you know, in our home growing up, or just in day-to-day life in society, how would we know how to do that? But I really believe, I mean, one of my friends posted a video yesterday about um, divorce advice during COVID. And I, and it really inspired me to kind of get myself out there even more, because I think a lot of times when there's a stressful situation, each person's stuff, like in quotes, comes up And then it can just be the perfect storm of, of, you know, my stuff coming up against your stuff and it creates this looping cycle. And a lot of times people don't know how to shift out of that. And so they end up leaving the relationship and there are, there is another way. So that's what I do a lot with my clients is really showing them that there's, there's another way to relate to each other where you can actually use conflict as a way to grow closer. Mm, that's so, so good. And I'm like ready to jump down that rabbit hole with you. But first, I want to know and I want you to share a little bit more about what brought you here. What what was going on in your life? Like, oh, I should become a conscious relationship coach. Like, what is your story? Such a good question. So basically, for my entire life, I have had challenges in my relationships from the time I was a really little kid in the home I grew up in, my parents are amazing and loving, but they didn't know how to meet my needs as a kid. I'm just very, very different than they are. So very sensitive, very emotional, and they had kind of no clue. And God bless them, they did the best they could, but it was pretty tumultuous, you know, growing up in that in that home a lot of the time. And so what I've learned through my work is that when I was a little kid, I imprinted some beliefs in my mind because of that dynamic. So beliefs like I'm not enough, I have to be perfect in order to be loved and accepted and all of that. And so moving into my teen years and then my adult years in the dating world, it was pretty challenging because I had these beliefs in my mind that I wasn't enough, that I have to be perfect and that ultimately I'll be alone. 
And so I kept recreating those dynamics with each relationship. And it was this cycle of like, you know, I really tied my happiness to something outside of me. So if I was dating someone or had a potential, you know, prospect, I was over the moon, happy, so excited. And if it didn't work out, I was like on the floor, you know, dark night of the soul, in complete misery, depressed, et cetera. Right. So the moment that really shifted this pattern for me was I had this really, really very toxic relationship. And for, to me, I thought that I wanted to marry him. So that's where I was at in that time and space. And it was super toxic and it was on again, off again, you know, heaven and hell, like the whole thing. And we broke up finally, um, not my choice, but we, he ended the relationship and I was just on my knees in the most emotional pain I've ever been in. And I just had this moment of like, there has to be another way. There has to be, I don't know what it is. I don't know how to find it, but there has to be, and nothing is worth this level of pain, nothing. So from there, I started to kind of work on myself. I dove into Louise Hayes work. If anyone's Mm. familiar with her, I I love her. Yes, I do too. Yeah, she's so wonderful. And so I dove into her work and then, you know, the journey began. And like you said, at the beginning, I was led to the perfect people, the perfect books, the perfect circumstances to really evolve into another way. And so now this is the work I do with my clients. (laughs) That's so, so awesome. And I mean, I love when I hear stories like this because there's so many different ways you could turn in that moment of despair. Mm -hmm. Like you can continue, get up and continue on the path that you're on. You could go even have a further breakdown or rock bottom, or you can do what you did, which is the, the bold, brave thing to do, especially when like, that's not your norm. And you know, and I know from this work, like our subconscious will go to work saying, oh no, we're not going to do that. That's not what we're used to. That's what we, not what we know. This is what we know. And I think it's so awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And I will say, you know, I had many, many moments of pain and misery before that. And I guess it wasn't enough of like a, like a wake up moment, but that moment was just I don't think I could have gone farther down. Like it was my rock bottom. So, you know, sometimes it takes what it takes, but I'm grateful for all of it now because now I can literally sit across from anyone and really hold that space for them, whatever they're experiencing. And it's really pretty beautiful. So I kind of think of it as like my training program. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think this is, I want to touch on this just for a moment. Cause I think it's so interesting, you know, being sober for 10 years and we talk a lot about rock bottoms in the rooms of recovery. And I've never had this conversation with anybody, but this question just came up. Like, isn't it interesting how we talk about how we always have these other moments in our lives where that should have, or could have totally been our rock bottom. And it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And sometimes our rock bottom isn't as bad or as low as some of our other experiences. So it's like, what all of a sudden make this the the rock bottom? And, you know, you were in jail or whatever. That wasn't your rock bottom. But, you know, the simplest thing of getting in a car accident or just walking into the right room and knowing like you've had enough, that's your rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. And I feel like, you know, the work that I do, and I know you're familiar with this, but going into the subconscious mind, I mean, some of the reasons why it can be so painful in romantic relationships is because we're literally replaying out past experiences and, and even trauma, depending on, you know, some people don't like the word trauma, but really impactful experiences that we had as kids. And we're seeking the love and the comfort and the peace in our romantic partner. And so that's why it can be so excruciating because we're just proving our belief right again, right? Like I'm, oh, see, I'm alone. Oh, see, I'm different. I'm crazy, whatever. And so it can be one of those things where like the straw that broke the camel's back, I think like you've just had so many. And I know for myself, I had 
so many moments. People would always say to me, you should write a book. You should really write a book. And I would entertain all my friends with these stories, but I was really sick of this cycle. You know, it's like, I can't anymore. No more. That is so good. And I, I think it's so important, you know, that people, and this is why I love to talk about it because it's truly stuff that is from our past, from our childhood up until like what the, it's age seven or eight, somewhere around there that mm-hmm. our core beliefs are implanted in our brain where we get that. I'm not good enough. I'm not, I don't, people don't love me. They just leave me. They, all of the things. And it's not, and when you say trauma, like people think trauma in a child has been sexually abused or beaten or something they witnessed, you know, something really tragic or terrible. That's not necessarily trauma. Like those are trauma as well, but it's not so big and and obvious all the time. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's exactly right. I mean, those are of course traumatic experiences and of course would impact you. So that could come into play in this work, but there's also these little tiny moments. And I kind of believe that it's a function of being human because, you know, when we think about what it would be like to have a a child, like I think about this all the time and I'm not a mother yet, but I think about, you know, you can't show up hundred percent as your best self 24 seven, you know, for 18 years or 19 years that you have your child in the home. So even if, you give them the most loving, amazing home, they still might have a moment or two. And with the mind of a child come to that conclusion, you know, I'm not enough. And what I've found in my work with people is that every single one of us, it doesn't matter, you know, how beautiful, how smart, how wealthy, like all the things that we think would equal happiness that you are. Every single person has a set of these limiting beliefs that don't serve them. And also they served us for a time, right? So they they served us for a time. So it's not to make ourselves wrong for imprinting these beliefs in our mind as kids, but, but the whole topic of of trauma, I was explaining to um, one of our mutual friends, Michael, I was explaining to him because he said, well, what if I had a pretty great childhood? And, and what if I don't really have anything that's kind of sticking out in terms of something that impacted me. And I would, I would define trauma as anything that kind of rocks your nervous system. Mm -hmm. So any experience you have, and that could be something as small as, you know, asking your parents for a toy at the store and you really want it. And they say no, and you feel like panicked or sad or whatever. And it can, it can impact you in that way, even though it sounds so silly. Yeah. And So it can be a really wide range. And I have another friend who's a coach and she describes it as like trauma with a big T is like the car accident, the abuse, the violence. And then trauma with a little T could just be like a comment that maybe somebody made that really resonated with you that caused your brain to go into that survival state of like fight or flight. Like, oh my gosh, I'm in danger. Yeah. Yeah, I love that description so, so much. And I, I mean, I used to think of trauma the same way until yeah. I until I learned more about it. And it's like, oh, that little girl on the playground just said she didn't want to play with me. And she didn't mean any harm by it, but I did. I took it as the end of the world and I was not good enough to be in that group. Right. And then you carry that story forward with you. Yes, that's such a good example. And there's, you would not believe how many times, well, you would believe, but maybe some of your listeners wouldn't believe how many times I have sessions with people and it comes back to like an experience as a child with another child and something they said or something they did that just really impacted, impacted us. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, definitely. I get it all the time. And it's like, oh my gosh, we don't realize as kids what what we're really doing to one another. Yeah. You know, and we're and and everybody's doing like you said the best they have with what they know and have in our you know our even our parents, whether yes. you had model parents or you had parents that weren't necessarily model, but they're also, you know, basing them doing what they know off of what they their beliefs and what how they, you know, grew up into adulthood. So yeah. And something that came up because I'm actually I also work with couples. And I have a couple, a husband and wife that mentor me. 
And they brought up this, and I think it's so important to remember this, that, that we're really fortunate to be alive in this time and space where it's like accepted to work on yourself and like look within and move through things and heal patterns. And our parents, you know, they didn't necessarily have, you know, a coach on every corner or yeah. it wasn't acceptable <laughs> maybe to go to therapy. So we have to really understand and exactly what you said, that people are doing the best they can with what they have and what they know. And when you know better, you do better. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I believe that like our children and the next generation will be even more evolved than we are. And each generation is more evolved than the one before. So our parents are dealing with what happened in their childhood with their family. Yeah. So the cycle. Yeah, it, it definitely... It definitely is. And that's so well said. I love that so much. So tell us a little bit more. You, you have this moment and you're like, I've had enough. I'm done. And Mm -hmm. now I know, I mean, you know this too, but so many of us out there want that instant change, that instant gratification. It would be so easy to think, okay, I read this book. I have the tools. I'm ready for this next relationship. Right. What was that (laughs) process like for you? Oh gosh. Well, really good question. I always say to my clients, you know, I wish I had a magic wand and I could just grant your every wish, Yes. but you know what you, you have it. Like you have the magic wand for your own life. And in any moment you can make a decision to move towards the life you want to create. It doesn't matter how far down you've gone in the other direction in this moment, you can choose again, which I think is very powerful. And so I mean, for me, it was definitely a journey. I started implementing tiny little things from those books I was reading. Like I got the audio book. So I listened to Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life over and over and over again, driving to work, driving home from work and just started implementing. And I realized I started to feel a little bit better. And I now know that I was rewiring my brain into like a new way of thinking, but, but it's, It's just that willingness. I really believe that's all it takes. If you have the willingness and you want to shift, you absolutely will. And you absolutely can. And it does take a little bit of time. So when I work with clients, we do a minimum of three months just so that they can have that support in really moving into what they want to create. Because like you said earlier, the comfortable way is the old way, right? So there are moments where the brain's going to want to go back to the old in quotes, safe way, but that's not what we want to create anymore. So I would really invite anybody listening to seek the support of, you know, a coach, a therapist, you know, a retreat, maybe like do whatever feels like it resonates for you. Just take the first step. And it's a process. But the other thing is you don't have to have it all figured out before you have your next relationship, you know, so none of us have this all figured out. We're all expanding and growing on this human journey. And I mean, I think if we wait till we have it all figured out, we'd never ever have a relationship, but I would encourage anybody who has recently gone through a breakup to take some time and just tune in to, to what, what did you learn? You know, what did you love about that relationship? What didn't work for you and give yourself time to heal and shift and kind of change your mindset a little, because otherwise you're going to end up with the same person in a different body. And that happened to me many, many times. And I have a client now and she's going through a breakup and she's so sweet and I just love her and her ex-boyfriend jumped into a relationship with someone else like right away. And I keep just reinforcing with her. I know that that is so painful and that's where he's at. He's just going to recreate the same dynamic with this new person and God bless him. That's his journey, but you are doing the real inner work. Like you're taking this time for yourself to learn, to give yourself what you're needing to get really clear on what you want to create so that the next person you meet, you're going to be a different version of yourself. So you're not going to play out the same pattern. Mm, That's so, oh, that's so good. Yeah. Have you noticed anything like a common theme around people? Are they, are they afraid to be alone? 
Oh yeah. Absolutely. And what what do you think that where do you see that most show up? What's real what's going on when it comes to that? Because I know that was me for a really long time. I was afraid to be alone and I just wanted somebody to really love me. Yeah. And even though they loved, they did love me. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know how to accept it. Totally. Yes. Yes. There's so many layers to this. <laughs> I feel like we could have like a series of podcasts, but um, okay. So are people afraid to be alone? I think that's a very common thing. I also was afraid to be alone. I had a period in my life where I didn't want to be alone for more than half an hour. Like Mm -hmm. I would do anything I could. I would hang out with anybody, anybody so that I didn't have to be alone with myself. And now I know looking back that I was actually scared of what might come forward for me if I was alone. So I was trying to distract in whatever way I could. So it's very common. I also think our belief system that we in, in society or what we grow up with, the programming is like, you know, you meet this person and you live happily ever after. And so if you don't have this person, then maybe something's wrong with you or, you know, everyone else gets it, but you don't like, there's a lot of programming. And when we look at the movies we watched as kids, like the Disney movies, the prince comes in and carries the princess and rescues her. So I know a lot of people, myself included, wanted to be saved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want someone to come in, heal my broken heart, you know, do whatever so that I don't have to do. I didn't even know I could do it myself. Like how freeing to finally learn that I could do it myself. But um, yeah, I think a lot of people are afraid to be alone and it's okay if that's you and know that you are not alone in that fear of being alone because super common. And especially right now, my God, like with everything that's going on and the level of isolation Mm -hmm. with the quarantine, I mean, people are really having to sit with what comes up with them because we're not able to distract ourselves anymore. And even me who I've done years of work on myself, this has been challenging. So I can only imagine people who aren't very familiar with this work, how it must be, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that was going to, where my next thought was going is because of this time, like there's people who are forced to be in isolation. And then like we talked about a little bit ago about people, you know, couples who are really discovering, like, I don't know if I can be with this person. I don't know if I can live with this person. Yeah. So what do you say to them? Because I totally understand that space of like, I, I, I'm going to divorce him. I'm going to leave. No, totally. And it was all my stuff. Yeah. Most of it. yeah. Not all of it. Cause they, everybody plays a part, but a lot of it was my stuff. And where, where is that? And now I'm like, Oh my gosh, I couldn't imagine had I actually followed through with my sickness. Right, right. That is so beautiful. And it's so I love having these conversations because this is so, so, so important. It's so important. So what I believe is that our partner is a mirror for ourselves, right? And some people, myself included, don't always want to look in that mirror. It can be a pretty rude awakening. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I can give you an example. Um, some of my stuff from, from when I was little is that, you know, I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel heard, which is also very common for people. And so in my partnership, sometimes I will find myself playing that out with him and it's not actually what's happening in the present moment, but I am so convinced because what happens is our, our wounding or our trauma gets triggered by something in the present. So an example could be, you know, I I share something with my partner and this is what used to happen for us a lot. Actually, I'd share something and he would be silent and my brain immediately goes to, he doesn't hear me. He doesn't see me. He doesn't understand me. This is not a good idea. Like, and what happens in that moment, that's a triggered moment, which I know, you know, this Katrina, but for people listening, that's a moment where we get triggered. And our logical brain is offline. So the logical part of us where we're thinking, this person loves me. This is not, you know, my mother. This is my partner. That part's not accessible. And the fight or flight survival part of the brain is firing on all cylinders, like fight, flight, or freeze. 
get out of there. You got to scream and yell to get your point across. You know, it's just, it's pretty interesting. And the more I learn about trauma and how it impacts our function of our brain, the more it makes so much sense when we have those moments of like, this is a bad idea. I need a breakup. I need to get divorced. Like, and really in those moments, these are the moments where I know it's uncomfortable. I know it's literally can feel like misery, but if we can peel back the layers of what's happening there, we can uncover dynamics and things that are playing out with both people and help to shift that. And I have processes that I take my clients through, whether they're in relationship or they have an issue with a father. Like I had a client who had a big fight with her dad. It's the same process because when two people come together, two separate childhoods, two separate set of issues in quotes, it can be that it can be a huge breakdown basically. And so if people don't know, and most don't how to navigate through that and come out on the other side you can just just think, you know what? It's better off just not to do this. Mm-hmm. And I totally get that. I completely get it. But I have to say that in those moments that I've stuck it out when I've thought that in my current partnership, we get to a, a level of deeper connection, more intimacy, more love. And that is like a true partnership, in my opinion. That is conscious partnership, in my opinion. Mm. I love that so much. So that's so, so good. So on point. I want you to touch though a little bit on when it's those times to Mm -hmm. take that person and move them to an outer circle, those toxic relationships, because we, we don't want to hurt their feelings. We are, you know, we're, we're people collectors. So we think the more people we have around us, no matter how nasty they are, or not how good they are for us, we're going to keep them close by. Mm -hmm. So share a little bit on that. Oh my gosh. Well, of course, I have a story for every single thing you say. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) But, you know, years ago, I was a people collector as well. And I thought, you know, the more the merrier. And I do love connecting with people. And so I thought, you know, the more friends I have, the, the better. And now I've gotten to a point where it's like, if this relationship does not add something to my life, then it doesn't belong in my life. And it's not, you know, a judgment on the other person. It's just what works for me and what doesn't. And I work a lot with my clients on setting boundaries and people pleasing and how to navigate the discomfort around that. Because another, another thing that's very common with most of us is the people pleasing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. you know, I don't want to hurt their feelings or they need me, they need me, you know, for their well-being. And it's these stories that we tell ourselves. And if we get to really the deepest layer of that, it's usually not, you know, I don't want them to be uncomfortable. It's that I don't want myself to be uncomfortable setting that boundary and holding the boundary. Yeah. But But what happens, and I had this, I had a retreat this spring and they talked a lot about this. Um, What happens is if we get into that cycle of putting other people before ourselves, we will build resentment and it's going to come out and it will come out probably in the form of, you know, being irritable or being snippy, or if we're holding it all in, it could be a physical condition, like a physical illness. And so you know, it's a, it's a muscle. It's like little by little making little changes. And two, I really believe your intention is, is everything because I started, you know, setting the intention years ago. I just want to be surrounded by the people, places, situations, and circumstances that lift me up and just setting that intention, praying every day. And something miraculous happened because a lot of those friendships that were really kind of superficial, just fell away. And I didn't even have to have a conversation. I didn't even have to be in that discomfort. It was a little sad. Like I did grieve the loss of of those friendships, but there wasn't some big blowout fight. It wasn't like a, a traumatic situation. It just kind of, we were just in different energy fields, I would say. 
Yeah, I think this, I love that you touched on it because it's so important. And I, I think that we forget that we, we really are the owner of our own lives and we get to choose who we're in relationship with. Yeah. And sometimes I feel that this is like the first step, like really evaluating who's in your space and clearing out who isn't, who isn't filling you up, who's really draining you so that you can make space for those relationships that you really crave. And it doesn't mean something bad about the other person. It's just where they're at and you can lovingly release them. Yeah. And it's, it's just not a fit at that time. And, you know, I've had, I've had friendships that completely fall away and we don't speak anymore. And then I've had friendships where I just lessen my contact a little and yeah. just whatever feel. And, you know, some of them have come back around, and, you know, years later and it's, it's a stronger connection. And the thing is, I think we need to really recognize that every single one of us has within us whatever we need for our own peace, for our own well-being and our own love. So if you're worried about, you know, setting a boundary because how will the person feel, how will they react, et cetera, you're giving them a beautiful opportunity because you are modeling number one, how to set a boundary, how to honor yourself with love, with kindness. And if they're upset, it's a beautiful opportunity for them to show up for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because they have what they need within them. Like we all do. And we've been taught that our peace is somewhere out there and it's just total BS. Yes. So giving, it's actually an empowering thing if you kind of look at it at the deepest level, because if they're upset, then they have something to work on within them because they have, they are valuable because they exist, not because we're in their life. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. That's so, so good. Like, I just love, love, you know, helping women through that too. When I coach with them, it's like, this is not about you. This is about them and what's going on with them. Yes. And that just reminds me of one of my favorite quotes where it says, it's something like, no matter how peaceful and loving you attempt to be, people can only meet you at the level they've met themselves. So most of the things that are happening have nothing to do with you personally. It's like we're playing out our past dynamics and our belief system, and we're just using whoever's in front of us as a way to play out the drama. What, how do you help your clients through working on themselves, the relationship with ourselves? Because we want to think, oh, oh, great, these relationships with everybody else. But the most important one is we have with ourselves. Yes, Katrina, that's like my number one thing. I'm so happy you brought that up. Yeah. And, you know, for many people, they have a hard time wrapping their head around that. And I get it because people used to say that to me when I was, I had a period in my life where I was extremely depressed and very unhappy. And people would say, and my mom would say, you know, it starts from within you. And I'd be like, (laughs) but now I see. Yeah. Um, But what I do with my clients is I just always remind them that, you know, your relationship with yourself sets the tone for every other relationship in your life. Mm -hmm. It really, truly does. And so the more you nurture that relationship and really use anything that's coming up, any, you know, conflict, any stress, any fear as a way to get to know yourself on a deeper level and really heal those things your outer world will shift to match your inner world. So all we really need to do is do our own inner work. And this is literally my prescription for world peace. Like do your own work on yourself. Make sure you're not, you know, don't project onto other people. It it happens, but be aware when you're doing it, you know, and your, your outer world will start to shift as your inner world shifts. Because when you no longer give those beliefs, you know, I'm going to be alone. People leave me. I'm crazy, blah, blah, blah. If you no longer give those power, then you start to wire in a new way of thinking. And then it's like the filter through which you see the world. So looking through the lens of I'm not enough, you're going to find the people, places, circumstances that prove that right. Looking through the lens of, you know what, I'm valuable because I exist. You're going to see how you're valuable. And it's, it's that, that simple and that difficult. (laughs) 
Okay, you gave me chills when talking about your relationship with yourself. And then I'm in here laughing to myself because I totally know. I mean, clients I coach all the time when I say like, how are you speaking? What are the words and language you're forming? I want you to, I don't, you need to stop tearing yourself down. Like sometimes I want to reach to the computer and just hug them and shake them a little bit because they think it's so much more difficult than that. We're looking outside. Well, what's the strategy? What, what can I do? No, it's right here. It's right here. Yeah. You have everything you need. And it sounds so cliche. Like, and I can just imagine myself, my younger self listening to this and being like, whatever. Exactly. Me too. So much me too. (laughs) Yeah. But, But like, this is why I'm so passionate about this because I honestly, this is what I needed to learn and hear when I was younger and going through all these challenges and I'm just grateful that I did find this information and that I was led to a different way because I was very unhappy for many, many years, very unhappy on antidepressants, on like, um, seeing a psychiatrist and every, it, nothing really helped like maybe a little, but now I take no medication and I really just tune in with myself. And in doing that, I feel we can heal a lot of these diagnoses you know, I so a thousand percent agree with that. And that's why I think the work that you do and the work that I get to do is so beautiful and so needed. Mm -hmm. And I know it's only getting out there more and more in the world because nothing, nothing again, like people, counselors and therapists and psychic, they're all important people. They all have a piece to play in the role, but there's this inner work, like Mm -hmm. really taking it in that is not being done in those spaces. That is crucial. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. And I personally had, you know, many years of therapy and I'm very grateful for all of it. Yeah. Uh, all of the books, everything that I've yes. come across my path and coaching is what was the game changer for me. And I've heard different people explain it different ways, like the difference between therapy and coaching. But for me personally, it was like uncovering what is going on in my brain. Like, because I can understand where it came from. Yeah. It helped me understand my past, the dynamics, where it all came from. But now how do I shift it like permanently and really rewire the brain? And that is what I do. And that is what I know you do. And that is what changed my life and my entire, my entire life, my relationships and my life. Yeah. So super, super powerful work. Yeah, it totally is. I mean, you and I would not be sitting here ha- having this conversation had I not done that kind of work. Oh, no, you I know? wouldn't. Even, yeah. <laughs> and it's really beautiful. You know, wherever you're at in your journey or on your journey, everyone has a different path. So mm-hmm. there's no, you know, timeline. There's no like, that's another thing that really bothers me about society. Like, by this age, this should happen. And by that age, da, 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 da. I'm like, no, everyone has their own journey. Wherever you're at is perfect for the lessons that you're learning and moving through. And I know for sure that having a coach, having support, you can accelerate that process and really just step into the life that you want, that you deserve, that you have in your heart, because it's there for a reason. That is what you're meant to be living. Mm -hmm. can totally experience that. Yeah, it, it so is. And I, you know, I just a thousand percent believe that no matter where you're at on your journey and where you choose to go, if you choose to hire a coach right now, or you wait and you read some more books, like everything has its space in your life. Like every step that I've had to take mm-hmm. was necessary to get yeah. me to this point in time. Yeah. Had I missed a step. I would be somewhere else right now. Totally. Yeah. And that's why just honoring the process and just saying like, I don't know, whatever you believe, God, the universe source, like your higher self, show me the way Mm -hmm. I'm willing to see this differently. That's one of my favorite prayers from Gabby Bernstein. I think it's from a course in miracles originally, but I'm just, I'm willing to see this differently and just see what happens. You will be led. You will be guided and trust that inner knowing when someone comes across your path and I'm getting better and better at this, like, you know, you feel that pull, like this is the next step for me. Mm -hmm. Just jump on it and go with it and trust it. Yeah. 
Oh, thousand. Yes, 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 yes. So much goodness. So much goodness. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I I love your heart. And I'm so grateful that you came on and shared your story and your wisdom. You're changing so many women's lives. I just know it. Thank you. So are you Katrina. And I actually work with men too. So I work with men and women, but yeah, this work is just so needed, especially right now. So God bless you as well for doing this and may the ripple effect just keep going out to everyone on the planet. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything on your heart that you feel you want to share that hasn't been shared yet? Honestly, I feel like we had a really powerful conversation. So I know, right? Yeah, I don't I can't think of anything right this second. But I would love to come back because I feel like this conversation was so powerful. And I would love to maybe have you over on my Instagram, we could do a live or something like that. Totally. I'm absolutely down for that. Heck yeah. 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 <laughs> Woo, that'd be awesome. Where can everybody find you? So people, you can find me on my website, which is jesshendrick.com or on Instagram at coach Jess Hendrick. So those are probably the best ways. Okay. Awesome. I'm so excited for you. And oh my gosh, I just love this conversation. And I just so grateful to you. So thank you so much for showing up and being who you are and doing the work that you do. Thank you. And thank you for having me. And thank you for doing the work that you do because it's just so, so, so needed. So I'm just grateful to know you and be connected with you. Yeah. Same, same. All right. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Wait, don't stop listening yet. Just as we are fam, I so appreciate my listeners. And you know what would be so incredibly awesome is if you just took a few moments, headed on over to iTunes and left me a five-star review of the show. And if this episode resonated with you, share it with your communities, tag me at Katrina Lelly. My message, my mission doesn't get out there without your help. Until next time. Thank you.